Well, the recession might not seem like the best time to start a business, but our next guest is here to tell us that's not the case at all. Thomas Kalopoulos is the author of the new book, The Innovation Zone, co-founder of the Boston-based management and advisory firm, Delphi Group. Tom, thanks for joining us. You bet, Chet. My pleasure. You know, I first thought about this, and as I said in the intro, it, it almost seems counterintuitive it does. To, to start a new business in, in this very difficult uh, time. Look, there's a lot of gloom and doom. A lot of people think this is the worst time. You should hunker down and save your capital. But think about it. Capital has never been so inexpensive. Uh, talent has never been so abundant. Uh, all the commodities you need for a business, from the office space to the machines and equipment, will never be cheaper. So from a cost standpoint, it's a wonderful time to start a business. The other side of it is all the big companies have larger fish to fry. They're not going to worry about whether you pose a threat to them or not. So a lot of experimentation and innovation can be done in this kind of a climate. They won't pay attention to you until and unless you start to make some noise, and then... And then it's going to be too late. And by the way, you know what happens after a recession? A lot of merger and acquisition. All those large companies that were not innovating, guess where they go to buy innovation? All the small companies that were. So it's a great time to do it. And if you look back historically, some of the biggest companies today, GE, for example, was started in a terrible recession. Uh, Jordan's Furniture, Barry and Elliott, took over the family business in 1973. From 73 to 74, the stock market lost half its value. What a terrible time to start a new business. And yet, they succeeded, obviously. You talk some about innovation and... You, and and, and, and sadly, you argue that the United States has lost its innovative edge, or is about to. We're, we're losing it. I don't think we've lost it yet, Chet. I think there's a lot of, of reason to hope right now. Uh, but I think we're sliding. There was a recent study from uh, Babson and the World Bank that still showed we are a bastion for entrepreneurship. Uh, we have more entrepreneurs per capita, and we scale those small businesses very, very quickly. So a lot of reason to take pride, but I think we're losing our edge. And a lot of the reason for that is we're shifting our focus to large business and not small business. And that is the backbone of this economy, always has been. What can the government do to offer some encouragement to uh, those individuals who have some innovative ideas and might like to take the plunge? Well, you know, the new head of the SBA, Karen Mills, is trying to move things along by providing guarantees for, uh, for government loans through the SBA. We have to do more. I mean, we put $1.4 trillion into the bailout, and less than, I think, one-tenth of one percent has gone to small business. That's incredible. And yet... 50% of all employment is small business, and 70% of all new jobs over the last decade are small business. We need tax incentives. Uh, we need to make sure we guarantee more loans for small business. And we need to provide incentives for folks to go out there and take chances to experiment, uh, to take risks. And what are the chances of that happening in Washington? You know, unfortunately, I think we're putting a lot of money into the architects of failure, the large corporates that have gotten us here, and not into the real backbone. Uh, short term, I don't see a lot of room for optimism there. Long term, I think there's opportunity for us to redirect some of that investment and put it behind small business. I hope we do. Something to think about. Thanks, Tom. Absolutely. You're very welcome. Tom Kalopoulos, co-founder of the Delphi Group. Thank you for joining us. You can learn more about Tom's new book at www.theinnovationzone.com.